In Mountain View, California, a company called ShotSpotter is at the forefront of crime detection, working with law enforcement agencies across the country. Well, it started uh, right here in the Bay Area, in Silicon Valley. It was started by uh, Dr. Robert Schoen about 15 years ago that uh, did a lot of work in the radar area and thought that he could apply some of the scientific principles around uh, d developing a gunshot detection and location technology. Really all about uh, acoustic sensors. These sensors are essentially microphones with computers attached to them, trained to listen to uh, booms and bangs. And because they have a very precise location, each sensor will hear the boom or bang at slightly a different time. Our sensors really collaborate, and that triangulation allows us to put a very precise lat-long uh, fixed point on a map that show, shows you where that gunshot event happened. And it's literally within feet. The city of Minneapolis, Minnesota implemented ShotSpotter in 2007 to battle their burgeoning crime rate. With ShotSpotter, we get an instant uh, alert. We can send squads much faster wow. and tell them exactly where to go to the point where we say, look in the southwest corner of the backyard of this address. Uh, so it's, it's been very successful for us. It's a great tool, um, not just for law enforcement, for citizenry. Because the shot spotter is also connected to our camera network, the cameras automatically swivel and turn and face where the shot was at. Shot goes off, camera turns to where the shot came from. Deputy Chief Robert Allen discusses how shot spotter has reduced Minneapolis's crime rate. That's been successful in a couple different cases, uh, getting us good clues. In one murder case particularly, uh, it's the only thing that solved the case. Well, we got a call approximately noon on, uh, in September of 2010 of uh, a person dead uh, at 30th and Colfax. Christopher Roy Durand was found murdered with no witnesses on the scene. We were actually in home, at home eating breakfast and then we just heard some, some, somebody came outside and they were screaming and we came outside and he was just laying there, he wouldn't move, so we called the cops. We did a canvas of um, houses in the area. Somebody saw a red car, that's all we had. And the shot spotter system had made the cameras turn to where the shots came from. We saw a red car leaving, had some very distinctive markings. Our cops looked for it, got it, stopped the person, but yeah. we got the guy. You got the guys doing it. And, uh, and, and he was convicted. Because of evidence collected by shot spotter's gunshot detection system, a jury convicted Christopher Hayes of first-degree murder and Michael Funches with accessory after the fact. We wouldn't have been able to um, charge this case without shot spotter. <laughs> Officer Ken Tidgewell patrols the streets of Minneapolis and talks about the city's use of shot spotter. The system in and of itself is a secret where the where the monitors are located for obvious reasons. Yeah, we don't sure. want people going up and tampering with them. They are set on high points in areas so as to pick up the best acoustics, obviously the sound from the, the, the shots being fired out. It could be on any one of the buildings we're around. Hold on it. But and check that out right there, perfect. That may so very well come up. It, it has the ability to differentiate between firecrackers and actual shots. Lucky. And while groups like the American Civil Liberties Union applaud shot spotters aim, they still have reservations. If the technology is implemented so that it's not it's not picking up people's conversations, it's it's used only to alert police when um, when a potential gunshot sound is heard. That's, That's okay. a good thing. That's okay. Right. Yeah. This is uh, less evasive than cameras. So it's a passive technology if you think about it. Video right. cameras are looking at everything whether All you the do time. something or not. Right. Our technology is in the background unless there's a boomer bang and then then it all starts then it starts you know the concern is uh, reliability I mean if you have a very unreliable technology you don't want police uh, charging into the neighborhood if there are high um, number of false positives early on we had a couple issues uh, we were picking up uh, hail hailstones as uh, gunshots initially, <laughs> oh, wow. but we figured it out the nice thing about the system is it learns it's become very reliable now <laughs> So ShotSpotter is up here on the screen, um, and that's basically the way it looks day to day. It's, uh, it's a map of an area of North Minneapolis in this case. Uh, what you're seeing now are uh, little dots that represent either shots or non-shot events. Something that it thought might have been, but after the computer did its magic, decided it wasn't. So okay. a typical okay. examples, firecrackers, uh, uh, backfires, those are the kind of things where citizens might hear it and call 911. Um, and before we would have had to go out and, and go drive deal around with looking. Uh, now, sure. and so so we're not having to respond on those false calls nearly as often, uh, and we can respond much faster on the real calls. Does the citizenry know about it? And if they do, you know, have they commented on it in any way? Um, 
there's some people in prison who know well about Josh Potter because <laughs> yes, because they're in prison because, because of Josh of it. Potter. Yeah, right. Uh, that's but, great. but for the general citizen, most of the citizens are aware that boy, when a gunshot goes off and in neighborhoods in North or South Minneapolis. Um, the police are going to be there pronto. Once we got shot spotter, uh, our crime is dropped. I would say at least 75 percent. The citizenry is more aware. Um, shot spotter allows people to come out of their houses more often. Huge. And neighbors get to know each other, so you know when something's odd in the neighborhood. Nobody wants shots fired in their city, but it's a reality that can't always be stopped. Luckily, cities like Minneapolis have another choice: detection, and it seems to be working. I'm Terry Shepard, and this has been Digital Justice.